Good morning, everyone. My name is Avishai Sadan, and I am the Dean of the Herman Ostro School of Dentistry of the University of Southern California. In my role, I direct eight remarkable divisions within the school, including the legendary one and only USC Division of Occupational Sciences and Occupational Therapy. Yep. Today, I have the honor and privilege of welcoming you, all, welcoming you all to a very special announcement about this division. But first, I'd like to take the opportunity to introduce some special guests that are with us this morning. So, I'm going to start by introducing our president, C.L. Max Nikias, and our first lady, his wife, Nikki. Next, I will introduce our trustees. Please stand as I announce your name and remain standing so we can recognize you as a group, not as individuals. Ronnie Chen and his wife, Barbara. Well, you know what, we'll break the protocol. You can acknowledge them first, all right, so. <laughs> Carol Fox, Dominic Ng, and Bob Paget. Ladies and gentlemen, our trustees. <laughs> also joining us, Amy Ross, president of the USC Alumni Board of Governors. Now it's time to introduce our senior administrators. Again, please stand as I announce your name and remain standing so we can, rec can recognize you as a group. Elizabeth Garrett, Provost and Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs. Uh, 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 okay. <laughs> Al Cecchio, Senior Vice President for University Advancement. Carl Mauchamir, General Counsel and Secretary of the University. Tom Sales, Senior Vice President for University Relations. Tom Jakowitz, Senior Vice President and Chief Executive Officer for Health. Ladies and gentlemen, our Senior Administrators. <laughs> and last, I want to introduce, acknowledge, and thank some of my fellow deans for attending today. Please stand as I announce your name and remain standing so we can recognize you as a group. Pinkas Cohen, Dean of the USC Leonard Davis School of Gerontology. Quinion Ma, Dean of the USC School of Architecture. Yanis Yortsos, Dean of the USC Viterbi School of Engineering. Ladies and gentlemen, my fellow deans. So, without further ado, I'd like to ask President C.L. Max Nikias to the podium for a special announcement. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you Avishai. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. morning, good morning. Fight on. <laughs> this is a special day for USC as we celebrate our half century long connection with a singular family and the professional commitment of its venerable matriarch. Today, we also celebrate the family's long-standing links to the university's top-ranked occupational sciences and occupational therapy program. And the program's future role in advancing the field, not only just here in the United States, but also throughout the Pacific Rim. We gather with great pride and purpose, and rightly so, this moment is a culmination of years of dedication and the visionary foresight of a distinguished family whose ties to USC date back more than four decades. And so it is with tremendous enthusiasm and abiding gratitude that I formally announce that USC trustee Ronnie Chan 
and his wife, Barbara, have committed $20 million to USC's pioneering occupational science and occupational therapy program. Thank you. Thank you. Their gift honors Ronnie's dear mother, thereby endowing and naming the USC Mrs. T.A. Chan Division of Occupational Science and Occupational Therapy. This is the first naming gift and the largest gift ever made to any occupational therapy program in the history of the field. This remarkable gift also greatly extends the division's international reach as it creates the USC Mrs. T.A. Chan Occupational Therapy China Initiative, which will establish a partnership with a top Chinese university to develop a graduate program in occupational therapy in China. In addition, this gift endows the Mrs. T.A. Chan professorship in occupational science and occupational therapy. The entire USC community stands with the Chan family this morning and warmly salutes its wonderful generosity and philanthropic foresight, as well as its continued dedication to our university and the Trojan family. Let's give them one more round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Today's gift bolsters an already sterling program that has long been an international leader, having topped the rankings for two decades. Occupational therapy education began at USC in 1942 and has accumulated an impressive list of firsts. The division established our nation's first two-year entry-level master's degree program in occupational therapy, the first post-professional degree program in occupational therapy, and the world's first PhD program in occupational sciences. Since US News and World Report began ranking occupational therapy programs in 1998, USC has held the number one spot for 12 years, more than all other programs combined. Yeah. So Ronnie's and Barbara's gift builds on this foundation of excellence and will allow a world-class program to flourish even more, bringing its expertise to a significant wider audience and a wider patient population. Given the plans for today's gift and the mission of the program, it will come as no surprise that Barbara and Ronnie drew inspiration from their own family. Their gift stands in tribute to Ronnie's beloved mother, who spent her career as a nurse. She is now in her 90s, and she is here with us. Mrs. Chan.
As Ronnie has said many times, all my friends who meet her fall in love with her. Ronnie, I met your mom this morning and I can understand why. <laughs> Today's gift reflects the character of an individual who has given so much energy and time to the healthcare profession and future generations of Trojans will find an exceptional role model in the senior Mrs. Chan. Barbara and Ronnie's inspiration, though, crosses generations. Both of their sons graduated from USC. Adriel, where is Stand up, Adriel. Stand up. There you go. Here is the older Trojan. Adriel received his bachelor's in international relations. And their son, Adli, discovered his passion for occupational therapy during his undergraduate years at USC. A classmate of his was in a serious car accident while traveling, and the first responders found Atlee's phone number in his wallet. Atlee always had an adult sense of responsibility and flew to the South to be by his friend's side. The classmate emerged from a coma when Atlee arrived. Adley watched as a highly skilled occupational therapist worked closely and compassionately with his friend. This proved to be a turning point in Adley's life. In that moment, he found his vocation. Adley returned to USC and earned his bachelor's degree in sociology, as well as his bachelor's, master's, and doctorate degrees in occupational sciences. Today, as many of you know, he's a clinical faculty member in the division. So in making this gift, Ronnie has spoken a great deal about his family, but rarely does he talk about himself. His humility belies his extraordinary accomplishments. USC awarded Ronnie the Asa V. Cole Achievement Award in 2009, which is the highest honor our alumni association can bestow on individual. This honor is so well deserved. Ronnie has been an invaluable member of our USC Board of Trustees for nearly two decades and has long been one of the university's most ardent ambassadors in the Pacific Rim. He has opened countless doors for our university and the connections he has fostered and the relationships he has nurtured will benefit our community for generations. The USC Hong Kong Alumni Association, the USC International Residential College, the International Plaza at the Tudor Campus Center, these all have their roots in Ronnie's leadership. To rally USC alumni in Asia, he donated generously to the International Plaza's building fund. So today's gift builds on the chance outstanding philanthropic legacy. Ronnie chaired our global conference in Hong Kong, one of our most successful conferences ever. And USC's extraordinary presence in the Pacific Rim is due in no small measure to Ronnie's years of tactical work and gracious outreach. So Ren Ronnie, not only we thank you, I want you to know we love you. <laughs> Barbara and Ronnie's gift will widen the occupational therapy program's international impact. Given USC's focus on the Pacific Rim, it's only fitting that it will allow the program to play a central role in shaping the field in China. China, despite its exponential growth in recent years, hasn't yet embraced the field of occupational science and occupational therapy. It's an emerging concept there. There is not even a proper Chinese word, I'm told, for occupational therapy. This program, will bring the number one occupational sciences 
an occupational therapy program in the world to a vast population at a critical juncture in that nation's growth. USC will be there as its catalyst. And from there, the program will branch out in other Asian nations, including India and Indonesia. In this way, Ronnie and Barbara's gift lays the foundation for billions of people to benefit, especially as they get older. Indeed, this program creates an enduring legacy for a family that commands deep admiration around the world and one that has found its way into all our hearts. So the entire Trojan family, with its expansive reach and deep wells of affection, warmly embraces the Chan family. And to each of them, we will always be very grateful. And now it is my pleasure to introduce our next speaker. USC status as a preeminent pioneer in occupational science and occupational therapy can be traced directly back to this woman's stellar leadership. Dr. Florence Clark is the division's associate dean and will be the inaugural holder of the professorship created by today's gift. She joined our faculty in 1976, and her contributions to the field's growth at USC are both far-reaching and profound. She holds the Presidential Medallion, our highest honor for academicians who have brought special prestige to our university. So please join me in welcoming the very first Mrs. T.A. Chan Professor in occupational science and occupational therapy, Florence Clark. Trustees of the university, executive leadership and faculty and staff, students and alumni, members of the Chan family and members of the Trojan family, I want to welcome you to this very special day. President Nikias, thank you for your audacity to launch USC upon an unprecedented $6 billion campaign, without which we would not be here for this historic occasion. And Dean Sedan, thank you for being a champion of this division. When people hear that this division is administratively housed at the Herman Ostro School of Dentistry, the first question they ask is, what do occupational science and occupational therapists have to do with teeth? <laughs> Followed by, wow, you must be doing something very interdisciplinary. The truth is that for over eight years, we have en enjoyed a relationship that has flowered into a very happy marriage. Once built, this marriage is built upon a shared understanding that realizing the full potential of human health requires holistic, systemic approaches to promoting health and to managing and preventing disease. Ronnie and Barbara Chan, your passion for and commitment to higher education, to scientific discovery, and to improving the human condition in communities throughout the world is well documented. But equally impressive is your dedication to this university through your personification of the Trojan family, literally. As an alumnus, Ronnie, you know how special USC is. In fact, so special that you and Barbara entrusted the education of your sons, Adley and Adriel, to this university. This day would not be possible without your embodiment of the lifelong and worldwide bonds of the USC Trojan family. Adley Chan. 
You discovered the profession of occupational therapy in 2004, as President Nikias described, when you were a sophomore at USC. One of your closest friends had been in a car accident and had sustained that very serious traumatic brain injury. Seeing his recovery was your first exposure to occupational therapy. And when you returned to classes the following weeks, coincidentally, you kept hearing about occupational therapy and feeling that this was some kind of signal and then feeling drawn to the field, having witnessed the impact of such a sudden catastrophic condition on a friend who was so young and so close to you. You went on to earn your bachelor's, master's, and doctoral degrees in our division and found the, the path that I think is your life purpose. In the decades since, I have been so proud to serve as one of your mentors and to watch you grow, not only into a promising junior faculty member here in the division, but into a true professional colleague. I look forward with anticipation to watching your continued trajectory within a profession that I know is your true calling. And to our division's new namesake, Mrs. T.H. Chan. I hope that everyone falls in love with me the first time they meet me from now on. <laughs> it, it would really help. <laughs> Never quite had that skill. I went off script, but I couldn't resist. <laughs> your devotion to your family, your devotion to your family and theirs to you is absolutely on full display today. And it is equally matched by your longstanding commitment to the well-being of others. You were trained as a registered nurse in northern China in the mid-20th century, and in your lifetime, you have witnessed the transformative power of education and the promises delivered by advances in the health sciences, grounded with a deep obligation to community wherever that may be. It is my solemn promise to you that the values which you and the late T.H. Chan have instilled through generations of your family will continue in perpetuity through our work here in the Mrs. T. USC Mrs. T.H. Chan Division of Occupational Science and Occupational Therapy. <laughs> White coats are a well-known symbol of clinical prof health professions, and here at the division we grant them to all students as a symbol of their entrance into professional life and the expectations for lifelong learning and ethical practice. When students put on their white coats, they are symbolically transformed from layperson to professional. So too, today marks a transformation, not just for our division, but for our school, our university, our entire profession, and most importantly, for the people served by occupational science research and occupational therapy interventions. So students, as a collective symbol of the transformation upon us today, I now ask you to please rise and don your embroidered white coats as together we usher in the new era as the USC Mrs. T.H. Chan Division of Occupational Science and Occupational Therapy. in your white coats. This gift, it's hard on a hot day to put on the white coats. It's one of the prices you pay for being professionals now. This gift is without precedent. This gift is truly without precedent. As President Nikias mentioned, it is the first naming gift for any occupational science or occupational therapy program in the world. 
In the late 1980s and early 1990s, our team of USC scientists was conceptually wrestling to define the uniqueness of the fields of occupational science and occupational therapy. After years of grappling with these philosophical issues, Dr. Elizabeth June Yorkser, who was chair at the time and is in the audience today, clarified it this way. Medicine is concerned with preserving life. Occupational therapy is concerned with the quality of the life preserved. The healthcare profession of occupational therapy and its undergirding research discipline of occupational science strive to do exactly that, to optimize people's quality of life no matter what disease, disability, or condition confronts them. It was almost 100 years ago that occupational therapy got its start helping wounded veterans of World War I get back their lives. Today, we are still enabling military heroes who have physical disabilities like multiple amputations and psychosocial disabilities like post-traumatic stress disorder to return home with the skills and well-being to successfully reintegrate into community life. Your gift, Ronnie and Barbara, will propel us to discover new insights and develop new treatments for these veterans and for many other patient populations. Every day here at the USC Mrs. T. H. Chan Division of Occupational Science and Occupational Therapy, our faculty members tackle the critical issues of our time. Maximizing activity and quality of life for older adults well into many, many years. <laughs> Reversing the epidemic of lifestyle-based diseases such as obesity and diabetes and enabling people with autism to flourish in their own worlds in their own, on their own terms. The gift will accelerate our capacity to build upon both our knowledge base and our therapeutic interventions. It will help us foster and expand collaborative eff efforts with colleagues in China, the Pacific Rim, and throughout the world. It will have a dramatic impact on the research and teaching of our scholars, on the skills of our students and practitioners, and on the health of the patients and families we serve. On behalf of the International Community of Occupational Scientists and Occupational Therapists, I want to express my sincere appreciation to the wonderful Chan family. And I believe there are at least 25 of them here today. It's awesome. With your generous gift, you are giving our profession a jump start on its second century. And ultimately, you will be improving quality of life for people everywhere. Thank you. Thank you, Lars. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Florence. I would like to invite to the podium Ronnie Chan and his family to be, come up here on stage. Nothing is official unless we unveil the banner and then we listen to the band. <laughs> yeah, Barbara, you come up. Come on, Atli and Adriel. You bring your grandma also. Yes. I don't that one over there, right? I'll say one, two, three, and then you get them. Okay. This way, uh, we turn this way. Right? Oh, that way. We have oh. that. We have the banner up there. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You turn this way. Here, Barbara. Uh, why don't you? Uh, why don't you wait until you get the letter? You could come over here. Let's come over here. Over here. Oh, you can see. Ah. Yeah, Mrs. Chan yeah. is. Yeah. We're ready? <laughs> One, two, 
Bring you the flowers. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Chan, this is for you. Keychains and these are pens. Pen. Yes. Uh, uh, what about uh, the pins? These are the pins, pen. right? Pens. Ink pens. Oh, it's pens. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ronnie, would you like to say a few words? <laughs> President Nikias, Provost Beth Garrett, the deans, Florence, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to be here. Let's get one thing right. Don't thank me for the gift. It is my wife and I, my family, that have to thank USC for giving us that tremendous opportunity and privilege. Nonetheless, for having made the gift, I suppose, Max, I'm given uh, three or four minutes to <laughs> occupy everybody's time. <laughs> so I will tell you a tale of three generations. It started with my mother. From now on, I'm delighted that you all bear her name on your white gown. You probably won't see her too much thereafter. She lives in Hong Kong. But I just want to tell you a few things about her. My mother, as Max noticed, is a registered nurse. When she graduated from school in northern China, she had a chance to go to medical school. And to the surprise of her family, she felt that she can do more good and help people more directly as a nurse rather than as a medical doctor. So she chose to become a registered nurse. That is my mother, Mrs. T.H. Chan. I came here as a student, first as undergraduate, and then later, many years later, I came back and got my MBA. It is very often said that a university probably has more impact on a man's life or a lady's life than perhaps any other years in his life. For me, it wasn't so. <laughs> but I didn't know the impact that USC would have on me until 30 years perhaps after I left the university. And that is because my two sons both came to USC. My older one, graduate of USC, 
ever since he was in college, he always wanted to do business. So he ended up joining me in my family company, Hang Long. The younger son, I never know what he wanted to do. <laughs> and I'm thankful to USC to give him the opportunity to find his passion and to pursue his passion and eventually become an occupational therapist. He told me one time, he said, Dad, what do you think if I were to bring occupational therapy to China? I understand that one of your, his professors brought occupational therapy to Japan from USC. Or at least that professor has tremendous leadership position in that profession in Japan. So when Adley told me that he wanted to bring the profession to China, I thought it was a very, very good idea. So I thank USC for giving us the opportunity to train our son in this way. You know, many parents these days worry about our children that not only when they did not find the passion in life when they're 18, they don't find them when they're 22 when they graduate, or 24 or 26 when they get their master's degree or whatever. Some of them never found their passion in life. I think it makes parents happy when their children found something meaningful, good for their own career, and good for the, men, the fellow men that surrounds them. So I'm very delighted that Adley should have found his passion. Moreover, my family never believed in inherited wealth. When my late father, before he passed away, the family decided that money should be given out, given away, and not for the consumption of the children. And so I want to make sure that everybody understands that I grew up as a poor kid, and my sons have grown up as poor kids, just to make sure that there's no illusion in their mind that the money will never go to them, I'm making this gift to USC. If he were to come to me and say, Dad, where is my share? My answer is, it has been given away to USC. <laughs> After all, wealth is not just for personal consumption. Money can do so much good if we were to use it wisely. I always think that wealth should never be measured by how much it is made. That is one measure. But the real ultimate measure of wealth and of money is what you do with it. It is how not how much you make, but how you have spent them in a wise way for posterity, for your fellow men and fellow women. That is, at the end, the ultimate purpose of why wealth is being accumulated. So finally, I also want to thank Dr. Karen Franz Clark. My son, in his good fortune, met you and you became his mentor. I want to thank you for all these 10 years that you have been watch watching over my son, who turned out, I guess, okay. <laughs> Hopefully his present job at USC and perhaps his future career in occupational therapy in China will make him even a better man and make you, Florence, even more proud than ever before. Thank you very much. Folks, it's your turn before I let everybody go. Let's play the conquest.
Once more, thank you to the Chen family for their support and investment in the USC Mrs. T.H. Chen Division of Occupational Science and Occupational Therapy. And thank you all for those in attending today. This starts a new and exciting chapter for the division. I am proud to be associated with USC in this division. Thank you all for attending and fight on. Thank you.